a goal that will one day make starships into time machines. Starships, in fact, may be our best bet. We shoot off in a rocket ship at super speed and let our own time slow down while the rest of the world moves on. We have a vested interest in these kinds of adventures. The high speeds that result in time travel are also our only way of smashing a time barrier that keeps us from traveling to the stars because the distances are so huge. We would really like to be able to traverse giant distances in a short amount of time in order to explore the universe on a human time scale. Even the nearest stars to Earth seem impossibly far away. Alpha Centauri is the closest. But in this case, close amounts to 4.3 light years away, 25 trillion miles, 100 million times farther than the moon. Today's speediest rockets would need 80,000 years to get there. So the challenge is to get there faster. But if we're going to use high-speed star missions as our way to get to the future, it still doesn't satisfy our dream of getting there in a flash. Achieving time travel by moving fast and so slowing your clock down relative to everyone else is a way of achieving time travel. It's a little bit like Rip Van Winkle uh, did by going to sleep and then waking up later and it's the future. But some might think of that as cheating in, in, in a way. It's not really the time travel that we think of where we uh, perhaps go through a, a portal or, or flick a lever on a machine and then end up at a different time. Physicists did important theoretical work on instantaneous time travel in the 1980s while helping Carl Sagan, who was writing his novel, Contact. The book imagined space travel faster than light through a corridor in space called a wormhole. A wormhole is a kind of shortcut between two different parts of space, which can be very far away, or they can actually be close to each other. But the key idea is that you can traverse the wormhole by simply going in through the entrance, one side of it, and coming out the other side. In Contact and many other science fiction scenarios, wormholes are used as tunnels to travel huge distances across the universe to other stars. But a wormhole with openings close together is a much better starting point for a time machine. Suppose I have a wormhole right next to me. If I put my arm into it like this, it would emerge over there. A wormhole is a great ingredient for constructing a time machine. A wormhole time machine would use the same Rip Van Winkle trick as the very fast spaceship. Super speed makes your clock slow down, while everyone else keeps on going. It works because both ends of the wormhole always have the same date and time, no matter what happens to them. You can take one end of the wormhole and put it on a rocket ship or something and send it off at very high speed and then back. So what happens is that when it returns, it's in the future. A traveling wormhole opening from the year 2010 might end up returning to Earth in the year 2510. Because its clock was so slow, it aged very little, while the rest of the world aged 500 years. So now if I walk into the end of the wormhole that's in the past, the end that didn't go on the rocket ship, I can come out the other end and I'd be in the future. Although each step of this scenario might be really hard to achieve with any technology we can imagine, it's all internally consistent in the laws of gravity and space and time that we understand so far. So that wormhole time machine is, we would say, a consistent solution of the equations of space and time. 
the wormhole time machine would work in reverse too, making time travel theoretically possible from the future back into the past where you started. Well, let's face it, most people are interested in the idea of going backwards in time because they want to fix things. The interesting thing is, though, that we can, using the laws of physics, at least explore what it would be like to travel backwards in time. And although we're preoccupied with time machines, it may be that time travel is possible through wormholes that are natural in origin. Another possibility, if we can't make time machines, is that maybe nature has already made them, and we just have to discover them. What could have happened is that in the very early universe, the nature of space and time was already twisted up in such a way that some of that got frozen in, leaving time loops that we might be able to use as time machines sometime in the future. So it's an interesting possibility that we don't actually have to create these things. But what if we are left to our own resources? Can we build a time machine at all? If theory says a wormhole is the way to go, then what does it take to make one? Wormholes are speculative ideas. We can write down the equations that describe them. We don't expect to bump into one in astronomy or anything like that, but we could be surprised. What we do expect wormholes to exist is at the sub-microscopic level, where space and time are fluctuating wildly. So what people imagine is somehow capturing a microscopic wormhole and growing it to a larger size. We don't know if that's possible. We have no idea how to do that, but that's probably what it would take if you wanted a big-sized wormhole. The technology we need to manipulate a wormhole may seem impossibly remote. But for those willing to let their imaginations roam, there's a glimmer of hope in at least one place. It's where space, time, the nature of existence itself meet in head-on collisions inside the biggest, most complex machine ever created by man. Where does the universe hide the secrets that might tell us how to travel in time? Our exploration has taken us through the world of wormholes and their possibilities as time machines. And now we're in search of the technology that might make space travel and time travel two sides of the same coin. If there's nothing on Earth that comes close to being a time machine now, there is something that might one day lead us to new laws of physics that help us determine if it's at least possible. It explores the universe not in the realm of the cosmic web and its galaxies, but in the domain of quantum physics, involving particles at sizes more than a million times smaller than the smallest atom. It's the newest tool at the frontier of physics called the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider is the largest, most complicated machine ever created by humankind. And it, its role is to help us study the frontier of particle physics. What it actually does is it accelerates protons in two directions around the ring, one way round and the other way round, to nearly the speed of light and then collides them. The collider went operational in November 2009. And as scientists ramped up the power, the energy in its collisions was increased almost tenfold by March 2010. And it will double that sometime after 2013. Today's theories of space, time, gravity, and quantum physics are still incomplete. And tools like the Large Hadron Collider will help fill in the ever-puzzling blanks. This is where we expect that if there's some missing physics that we need to understand space-time in a way that will tell us whether time travel is possible or restricted in various ways, this is where we expect the new results to come from. The goal is to figure out how rules governing the tiniest particles in existence 
also apply to the biggest things, like stars, galaxies, and the expanding universe itself. Without understanding this, building a time machine might be harder than trying to build a radio without knowing about the existence of electricity. There are many physicists in the world who believe that this understanding is in fact right around the corner, that it could happen within a few years or a few decades. On the other hand, it could be that this problem is in fact much harder than we think and that human civilization will simply not live long enough to figure out how it works. The Large Hadron Collider might also reveal extra dimensions that could play a role in time travel. We live in three dimensions of space. If we lived in only two dimensions, our universe would be a flat sheet. A sphere would look like a circle to us. The third dimension would be there, but just hidden from our view. If dimensions other than our familiar three are really there, they too are hidden. If we were to find experimental evidence for the existence of other dimensions, and if we were to be able to explore the meaning of these other dimensions and see how they come about, it could be that far, far in the future, this new physics would be utilized to come up with some new form of travel that allows us to at least get close to the speed of light barrier, if not surpass it. Getting close to light speed may be the most promising way to travel in time by slowing down our clocks. In this respect, the Large Hadron Collider is leading the way, even if its first step is an extremely small one. The Large Hadron Collider is 17 miles around, and it accelerates protons to nearly the speed of light. If you wanted to do that, but with human beings, a rough calculation shows you'd have to scale it up to a thousand light years around in order to do the same thing. This is like saying that the spacecraft, powerful enough to carry us to the stars at that speed, would be bigger than the distance we need to travel. Big enough, in fact, to enclose the nearest hundred thousand stars. Back on Earth, the physics of light speed and beyond meets surf culture on the beach in Malibu, California. Richard Obusi is one of the few physicists who have worked on the concept of faster than light warp drive. A warp ship, he says, rides a wave-like ripple of warped space, almost as a surfer rides a wave of water. A great analogy is with that of a surfer riding a, a, a wave of seawater. So just as the wave behind it sort of rises up and pushes this surfer through the ocean, I think it's a great analogy uh, with how a spacecraft is mutually pulled and pushed through the fabric of space. The idea is based in part on the fact that space in the universe is expanding. If we can make it expand at will, we may be able to propel a warp ship. We make space expand behind the ship and make it contract in front. The wave of warped space moves through the universe faster than light, while inside a so-called warp bubble, the ship is a passenger, never violating Einstein's rule against exceeding the speed of light. While warp drive is mostly science fiction at this point, there is some physics behind it. Mexican physicist Miguel Alcubierre worked out the complex math to support it in 1994. Unfortunately, there's nothing in the math that tells us how to do it. And though most scientists have major doubts, not all the skeptics are writing off warp drive completely. Warp bubbles may be impossible, they say. But what about super advanced beings building faster than light warp drive bullet trains to the stars and through time? In searching for the secrets of time travel, we inevitably meet the idea of warp drive or other strategies for traveling faster than light. 
It's the most sought-after solution to the dream of star travel and potentially turn